Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolay the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and we're going to start out this exhibition match stream with a match between Snuggle Base and Capricious on Battle for Planet 17. Which I haven't seen in a long time. Anyway, Capricious going for a Spiderbot factory, while Snuggle Base going for a Gunship factory. An interesting choice. This map is not very big, so gunships, I mean, they're not a bad idea, but they're a bit risky. Normally, you see a lot of gunships used on the larger maps, especially ones that have choke points that make it hard to attack very early on. But Battle for Planet 17 is the opposite. Battle for Planet 17 is the kind of map where you can send in anything. Like, this is all bot pathable. I'm not sure about vehicles, but nobody uses vehicles in this map. But yeah, so everything is pathable here. Capricious can easily walk in. Now granted, the fleas aren't going to have much chance to get through the Banshees, but that being said, there's not much else stopping anything. Blastwing coming in, which is probably Snuggle Base's idea, is go for a Blastwing Rush. Not a bad idea, but now that Capricious knows there's air... Oh, they're going for Lotuses. Interesting. I guess they're wanting to have that more steady firepower deal with the Banshees. Not a terrible idea. I mean, it's cheaper than getting Stardust, which are the better counter, but harder to position properly. Still, this is going to be tricky to deal with. Not the, ban not the Banshees, the Blastwings. Because the Blast Wings look like they're, well, they're going to have some chance to deal some damage, but I don't know. Defenders are usually what you use against Blast Wings. But I don't see any. I think the Lotus might be able to deal with it. No! No, no, the Lotus got distracted. Thankfully, no damage dealt, though. Capricious Commander will be able to heal no problem. So that's actually working out really well for Capricious compared to what Snuggle Base is up to. Snuggle Base on to Rapiers being extremely aggressive. Not a bad idea, whereas Tarantula's coming up here. I would not recommend that against Banshees, but there are Rapiers coming in, so that's not as terrible as, as an idea as it looks. Against Banshees, you pretty much just want to use Venom Redback. But against Rapiers, Tarantulas are fine. Tarantulas are not a bad idea. It's just a mixed force like that might be a bit problematic. Nice to know that this fleet's going to die to the Metal Extractor. Can we see where it dies? No, I can't. thought that was an explosion radius there. I don't know, surprisingly, it didn't die. How about that? Wow, that flea totally got away with it! Nice, free Metal Extractor kill there. I mean, granted, killing energy, is a, killing energy is a bit more important than killing metal, but it's not bad. That wasn't a bad thing at all. And that flea did not die, so, hey. Well done. Now, the Tarantula up that, I hope, is the only Tarantula. I know, there's one more. <sighs> I mean, I can understand why you'd want to go for a lot of Tarantulas, but we're probably going to see a lot of ground forces fairly soon. I think Snuggle Base is going to go for a ground switch. That's normally what you do after an air attack like this, so I can't imagine Snuggle Base is going to be going hard air for the rest of the game. They might. I don't know, but I doubt it. It would be really weird to do that. But it could work. I mean, at this point, there are a couple. There are only two tarantulas. It looks like Capricious is actually thinking, oh, Snuggle Base is not going to go air. Once they see the tarantulas, they're going to go for a ground switch. I'll just prep for that. And that's what they're doing. Two Venoms, one Redback, and five Hermits. That's an interesting combination. I mean, given that Banshees are still out there, I would have gone for two Venom, two Redback. Not two Venom, one Redback. So I'm not super confident in this composition. I do, however, like how these fleas are just causing no end of trouble for Snuggle Base here. And got rid of a crane, too. That's value. I mean, okay, getting rid of a metal extractor is all well and good, but getting rid of a crane? I mean, there is no more cranes. Right now, Snuggle Base has... Oh, sorry, they have one crane. No, that's a rapier. Never mind. Yeah, they've got no builders. They have their commander, and that's it. That really slows down Snuggle Base's expansion, especially when you consider that Snuggle Base is going for air. So, Snuggle Base's expansion with gunships... like. We've seen a lot of matches of gunship expansions. They are intense. I mean, gunships can just get anywhere. This map is actually one of the worst examples just because how small it is means the gunships don't have that much of an advantage. They're expanding quickly, yes, but so is everyone else. Still, you don't want to let that happen if you can avoid it, and Capricious avoided it. At this point, though, economy is about even. Capricious could use a bit more energy, and they know it. They are on top of that. They're not accessing. Snuggle Base is actually getting close to accessing, mostly due to lack of production. They seem to be indecisive about what to make with their gunship plant. And they don't have any caretakers around here. I'm a little curious what Snuggle Base is planning on doing. 
I mean, they're clearly building out the commander, which isn't bad. Probably going to upgrade to a Nano Lathe and then probably try to build up super quick with a commander. Ah, okay, there we go. There's the ground switch. Cloaky Bot Factory. Not surprising, Cloaky Bot is historically pretty good against spiders. I mean, they have the Rockos to deal with Venom Redback. They have Glaives to deal with Fleas and, to a lesser extent, Hermits. And that and ticks can basically just go anywhere the spiders will stop them although usually it's glaive rocco that's usually what cloaky bot uses although i feel like the cloaky bot spider bot matchup is not as well explored as it has been in the past like since spider buffs i mean spider buffs were a while ago but if you think about it the cloaky bot factory was not really used for a long time until the warrior buff the cloaky bot factory was unused for about two or three months i don't know if that really is going to be an easy thing to do. I mean, we'll see what we'll see what Snuggle Base does. Going for Glaive makes sense. But yeah, we'll see what they do. But I don't know how confident they are about this. Or, I mean, I shouldn't say confident, but how effective what they're going to do is going to be. I don't know. Two Venom Redback. Well, on the one hand, I actually don't totally disagree with that, come to think of it. I mean, I still think two red back, but, you know, having the Venoms, that's going to stop anything coming in. So, yeah, you, you only really do need the one red back to deal with it afterwards. But still, they're going to have four Venom and one red back. Once the red back dies, the Venoms aren't going to be able to deal enough damage. And there are Fleas, but that's not enough. Fleas, as, as has been shown for years, do not synergize super well with Venoms just because of the range problem. Like, the flea range is just a bit bigger than the Venom Splash. It doesn't work out as well, as you'd think. As you'd hope. But anyway, now first meetup, and unfortunately the Glaives are not in the best position. This is where Rockos would have been much more useful, and Snuggle Base realizing this, going for Rockos. Although I'm guessing they're going to be using the Glaives for the speed. Go around the map, try to avoid anything that looks like Snuggle Base. It looks like Capricious' army. Snuggle Base is just going to go straight past everything. Going to lose this Metal Extractor. But still... Snuggle Base just going to completely bypass, go behind enemy lines, infiltrate and damage as much as possible, and Capricious Nick had expanded, so this is actually going to be very effective. I I think Capricious is going to have a hard time. They are ahead economically, so at least it's not going to be a huge blow, but it is still going to be a blow. I mean, Capricious is still setting up for 30 metal per second on that factory. That's, I mean, they haven't quite gotten to that point. They do need more energy to do that. But still... They've set themselves up for that. Their expansion was actually pretty intense, especially given that they're against Gunship. And Gunship, yeah, I was mentioning before, Gunship can get some really intense expansions everywhere. But Snuggle Base never really stopped Capricious in the same way that Capricious stopped Snuggle Base. And Snuggle Base still hasn't taken the eastern side at all. That one crane, it's right there. It's assisting more than anything. It's not really expanding much. Unfortunately for Capricious, though, Snuggle Base with the Rockos. So that's going to give Snuggle Base a lot of problems. And, of course, the Glaives in the back, too. Snuggle Base, they have Recluses. They were building Recluses a while ago, so that's helpful. It looks like, are they just tanking the Rockos? No, they're, just, they're walking in. They're tanking. They don't care. I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, with the Recluses, it's kind of nice. But still, I don't think I agree with that. Just for the simple fact that it's... They've lost a lot of forces. There's no follow-up. I mean, there's no Redbacks alive. Nothing to really get rid of these. They're... The Venom's doing their best, but still, there's not a lot to help deal with all these forces getting stunned out, and Snuggle Base going straight for Rocco Warrior, which is not going to be easily dealt with. Okay, clean up the dregs of all the Glaives. That's not a bad idea, but still, that's a lot of metal that's inside of Snuggle Base's territory right now. And Snuggle Base's commander's right there. That's 1,128 metal. That is... 1,128 metal. That is a lot of metal. Snuggle Base... Yeah, they're already reclaiming that. Of course they are, because that's what you do. They're going to get a great advantage of that. Capricious, continuing to go for more Weavers. They will want to re-expand. And it looks like they're kind of not really doing so. No, not at all. Yeah, Capricious is going to want to get back that territory. And their commander right now... Oh my goodness, is going into his death. Machine Gun is all it's got. Trying to get rid of the Rockos from close up. Bad idea. One more volley is going to die, and... Ah, Capricious, why did you let your commander go so easily? That is painful. I'm sure it's painful for you, but it's painful for the Watchers, too. Actually, come to think of it, this is a replay, so granted, Capricious didn't realize I'd be casting it when they played the game, but I'm sure they were feeling a lot of pain when they lost their commander. 
kind of a desperation move. I think what they were thinking is that they have a machine gun, and the machine gun works well at close range, so they might as well just nullify the Rocco range advantage, and then realize too late there were still so many Roccos that their commander would get knocked out in two volleys. And they are rebuilding, though. Good. They are rebuilding. Capricious does have those metal extractors building up. Unfortunately, they're kind of streaming in forces. I'm glad to see the recluses there. That'll be helpful. But unfortunately... Oh, are the tarantulas... The tarantulas died, didn't they? Oh, that is irreplaceably expensive at this stage in the game. Yeah, one of them's dead. It looks like that's the other... No, it's the recluse. But yeah, tarantulas died. Those are pretty much irreplaceable at this stage. There's no way there'll be in time... Like, getting 400 metal into a unit in time at this stage of the game, given how much pressure Capricious is under right now, that's not happening. They need to deal with what's going on directly. And unfortunately, these recluses walked... In, I mean, if those recluses had come in two minutes earlier, that would have been great during this big push. That would have worked really well, but unfortunately, they came in a little bit too late, kind of staggered out. And that pretty much does it. I think not a bad demonstration of why it's important. While you, it's good to have your cues up and everything, it's important to bear in mind exactly what units are there. Zero K is not really a game where you can quite think of it as macroscopically as some other game, or, well, macro-orientedly as some other games. Like, other TA-based games, there's a certain tendency to think of things in terms of just large groups, like large, super fluid groups where the numbers don't matter a huge amount and the actual composition is more, well, you have 20 of this unit and 50 of this other unit versus 40 and 30, but the numbers are really minor. Zero K isn't like that. And you got to be careful to make sure you have the army you really want when you attack. Not the not that you have the army that will soon build up and eventually get there, but you actually have the army you want. And I think that was the problem. Is Capricious, they had a decent army. They had the Venoms and Redbacks with a bit of Hermit, but they needed those Recluses to deal with the Rockos and also to deal with the defenses more, effic more efficiently, and they didn't have that. Which is kind of unfortunate, but I think the big thing was also that Glaive attack there that really ripped apart Capricious' economy. Because Capricious had an economic advantage. It was 34 to 20. For metal. Energy was about even, but it's 34 metal to 20 metal. And then Snuggle Base ripped that apart with the Glaze going around the back. That was a really smart move by Snuggle Base, by the way. I mean, the Glaze would not have won against the Venom Redback, but they didn't have to fight them. And Capricious hadn't set up defenses. So that really hurt the economy. I think that really just broke Capricious' back as far as setting up went. Because then they also lost their army afterwards, and they didn't have the money to rebuild their army more efficiently than Snuggle Base did. So yeah, that kind of did it. I was wondering, what's the excess, though? Uh, Capricious Excess 320. Not bad, though. It's actually pretty low excess, all things considered. Yeah, and a lot of... You see, a lot of reclaim from Snuggle Base. That's where their economy really spiked at the end. Overall, though, metal is about even. Yeah, there's a small advantage for Capricious throughout, but not much. Unit value really in Capricious' favor up until probably about the point where they lost everything here. And then it just dropped right off. And also lost their commander, too. I think that might be what this drop is. Because they lost the commander very soon after they lost the army. Actually, it might be this drop. At any rate... Yeah, that's... That's how it went. So yeah, that was that match. The next match is going to be between... Hokomoko and Felthos on Tartarus. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.